Coming up on this Thursday edition of Newsline at Noon, opposition politicians vow to block the confirmation of the Prime Minister nominee over his controversial comments on Japan's colonial rule of the Korean Peninsula. Korea's export prices dip to their lowest level in six and a half years on the back of the strong local currency. Plus, Al-Qaeda-linked militants in Iraq are edging closer to Baghdad as they extend their control over key cities in the country's north and west. These stories are more on Newsline at Noon. It's noon Thursday, June 12th here in Korea. Thanks for tuning in live from Seoul. I'm Ojin Ju. It's very good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this lunchtime, President Park Geun-hye's second pick to be her new prime minister has found himself embroiled in controversy, just like the president's first nominee did. Some controversial comments made by Moon Chang-guk a couple of years ago have surfaced and are casting doubts about its confirmation at parliament. Chu Sun reports. During a lecture at his church three years ago, Prime Minister nominee Moon chang said Japan's forced colonization of the Korean Peninsula in the early 20th century was part of God's will to awaken the Korean people. He added that God also divided the two Koreas, saying that if the Korean Peninsula had been an independent state at the time, the South would have settled on communism. At a lecture the following year, the nominee put his ultra-right views on display again, saying Korea was able to enjoy economic development by adopting technologies from Japan during the colonial era and that it was a geopolitical blessing from God. Moon also denied that Korea's liberation from Japan was because of the People's Independence Movement, saying instead that liberation was granted to Koreans by the will of God. In response, ruling Tenpuri Party floor leader Lee Wan Gu said he believed the comments were not ill-intended and that the nominee was trying to say that Korea as a nation should learn from past mistakes and move forward. The opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy had a decidedly different reaction. They called the nominee's comments anti-national and outrageous and said President Park should immediately withdraw his nomination and apologize to the public for another failed personnel appointment. Moon chang representatives in a statement say the comments are being misinterpreted since broadcaster KBS has only aired portions of them. The presidential office, which is expected to announce a cabinet reshuffle and replacement of presidential secretaries this week, seems to be closely observing public response to the latest development. Choi yu Arirang News. Police and prosecutors have entered their second day raiding a religious compound belonging to Yu byung un the fugitive owner of the sunken Seodo ferry. The search resumed Thursday morning and nearly 4,000 police officers with court-issued warrants were dispatched to the Salvation Sex main compound in Gyeonggi-do province south of Seoul. Authorities are scouring the grounds for Yu and about a dozen members of the sect who are suspected of helping him escape the massive manhunt. Police and prosecutors are also looking for possible underground hideouts within the compound. A day after the floor leader of the ruling party gave a keynote speech to the National Assembly, it was the main opposition party's turn on this Thursday. Most of the focus was on the Seodo ferry disaster and on ways to make sure a similar tragedy never happens again. Our Tim Young Gil has more. Addressing a full National Assembly on Thursday, Park yong sun floor leader of the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy, called once again for a thorough investigation into April's ferry disaster. An investigation without boundaries is the order from the people. The very first task for the National Assembly in the second half of the year is to conduct a thorough probe into the Seoho ferry tragedy. Pang made a case for comprehensive reforms in the government and parliament, saying failures in the government system were one of the causes of the accident. She also sounded the alarm about the nation's aging nuclear power plants. A nuclear power plant disaster is like an atomic bomb. The nuclear industry has been tarnished with corruption scandals. 
which sets the stage for a major accident like the ferry disaster. The main opposition floor leader called for anti-corruption bills targeting high-ranking government officials to be swiftly passed at the National Assembly. She said that Korea's bureaucrats have long enjoyed landing jobs after retirement at companies and public institutions, which has contributed to the lax management of safety regulations. Park also pledged that the main opposition alliance will make Korea a better place to live by reducing youth unemployment, household debt and the growing social income gaps. Jim young -gil, Arirang News. Now, North Korea and Japan have been cozying up of late, but the United States says Washington and Tokyo still agree on the fundamental importance of a nuclear-free North Korea. U.S. State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki said Wednesday, the chief nuclear envoys from the two nations held very productive discussions this week in Washington on a wide range of issues related to North Korea. She said the meetings reflected the close cooperation between the U.S. and Japan in denuclearizing Pyongyang in a peaceful manner. Saki refrained from commenting on Japan's thawing ties with North Korea, but added Washington remains in close consultations with members of the six-party nuclear talks. And on a related note, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has reportedly expressed a willingness to visit North Korea to help settle the issue of abducted Japanese citizens. Japan's Kyoto News Agency reported Wednesday that Furuya Keiji, what the Minister it? of State for the abduction issue, said Abe has said he could hold talks with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Pyongyang on this very issue. The minister did not elaborate on when or where Abe made the comment. Earlier this month, Japanese Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida said it was important to think about how to bring the abductees home and that Tokyo would review a potential visit to the north. North Korea recently agreed to reinvestigate the fate of the missing Japanese nationals in exchange for Tokyo loosening some sanctions. North Korea admitted back in 2002 that it had abducted 13 Japanese nationals in the late 1970s and early 80s, but Japan claims many, many more were in fact kidnapped. And on the nation's economic front, as the Korean won continues to gain strength, the country's export prices fell to their lowest levels in over six years in May. And this trend is likely to prevail for the time being. Our UDN explains. Korea's export price index fell for the third straight month in May to 86.8. That's the lowest level since December 2007. Export prices fell 1.6 percent from the previous month, which means exporters were earning that much less when shipping out the same amount of products. The drop is attributed to the strengthening Korean won. The won rose 2 percent against a greenback last month when Korea posted a sizable current account for the 26th straight month. Foreign stock investors also helped push the value of the won higher as they brought the Korean currency to buy local shares seen as safe investment. Experts say the won is expected to keep strengthening against the dollar in coming months, given that the United States has no plan to increase interest rates anytime soon. Even then, they don't see any major decline in the country's exports. A growing number of exporters, particularly conglomerates, have grown largely immune to currency fluctuations. And research results since 2000 show that the country's exports are not negatively affected by exchange rate changes. So I don't see much immediate impact on exports from a stronger one. Hall adds, however, it's a different story for export-dependent small to medium-sized companies whose profitability has worsened since the global financial crisis in 2008. That could signal a widening gap between mid-sized businesses and conglomerates. Yurian, Arirang News. Korea's central bank has left its key rate unchanged at 2.5 percent for the 13th straight month in June, as it believes the domestic economy is still not on track to a strong recovery. Following its monthly monetary policy meeting this Thursday, the Bank of Korea said slumping private consumption due to the ferry disaster in April is slowing the pace of the nation's economic recovery. The bit, but the bank went on to say that exports remain strong with the global economy keeping up with its moderate pace of recovery. Governor Ijeo had told reporters earlier that a rate hike would only come after the economy is on path to a steady recovery, but ruled out the possibility of a rate cut. 
The country's inflation rate ran below the bank's target band for the 24th straight month in May, standing at 1.7 percent. Time now for a look through the international headlines we're following at this hour. For that, we turn to our Eunice Kim standing by at the news centre. Eunice, for the second time in two days, Islamist militants have seized control of another Iraqi city. That's right, they're getting closer to the nation's capital of Baghdad. And this just in, the leader, or rather a spokesman for the militants, saying are promising more attacks as Iraq expresses its openness to have U.S. airstrikes help them hold back the insurgency. Kim Hyun-bin has the story. Islamist militants have claimed another city in Iraq, the second this week, the one day after taking control of Iraq's second city of Mosul on Tuesday. Militants from the ISIL, an offshoot of al-Qaeda, overran the city of Tikrit, which lies just 150 kilometers north of Baghdad. The turn of events represents a huge blow to Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki's attempt to fend back the insurgency, which has made massive strides since U.S. troops left the country last year. He also took aim at the security personnel who fled the city of Mosul instead of defending their posts. I am saying this is a conspiracy because the numbers of al-Qaeda and ISIL forces do not have confronted the army and police forces that were located there. But what has happened? And how have the military units collapsed? The recent turns of events has raised concerns that Baghdad could be targeted in future operations by the militants. The U.S. has pledged appropriate assistance to help the Iraqi government and security forces. Uh, we are working uh, with Iraqi leaders from across the country to support a coordinated response. Uh, you can expect that we will provide additional assistance to the Iraqi government uh, to combat the threat from... During his trip to Greece on Tuesday, Iraqi Foreign Minister Hashar Zibari said his fellow leaders must unite to face a mortal threat. Zibari added that Baghdad will work with forces from Kurdistan to drive the fighters out of Mosul. Kim Bin, Arirai News. Turning now to another area of escalating conflict, intelligence sources and eyewitnesses in Pakistan say a U.S. drone has struck an area of northwest Pakistan. Not much detail was immediately available, such as its intended target and the presence of casualties, but the region near the border with Afghanistan is known to be a refuge for Islamist militants and foreign fighters. Earlier this week, militants attacked an airport security forces academy following a deadly raid on Karachi's Jinnah International Airport, the latter of which the group, the Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan, belatedly claimed it carried out with support from the Pakistani Taliban. And shifting now to Europe, angry taxi drivers in major cities across the continent united in the largest demonstration yet against the rapidly growing car service application, Uber. Traffic was snarled in parts of London, Paris, Berlin, Madrid and Barcelona as cab drivers blocked roads protesting unlicensed cab services that they say threaten their livelihood. The San Francisco-based company, which is backed by Goldman Sachs and Google, offers a driver-for-hire service via a smartphone application. Their pool of drivers do not have to pay for licenses that can cost $270,000 apiece. FIFA's embattled president Sepp Blatter indicated that he will seek another term during the pre-World Cup FIFA Congress in Sao Paulo on Wednesday. It marks a U-turn from his earlier commitment that this term, which expires May next year, would be his last. And it comes as the Football League has come under heavy fire for allegations of bribery in Qatar's bid and win for the 2020 World Cup. European football officials are lashing out against the new stance, calling on Blatter to step down and avoid extending the reputational damage he has caused on the Football Association. Stay up to date on the latest news out of Korea, connecting to our team of reporters about the issues that matter to Korea. On air, on your mobile, online, 
Find out more about Korea on Newsline at Noon with Mark Broom and Ah oh Jin Ju. Korea is pretty much paradise for smokers with its super cheap cigarette prices and lack of serious anti-smoking policies, but this might not be the case if the nation's health ministry gets its way. With hopes to cut the high smoking rate in Korea, the government is mulling over ways to make a pack of cigarette a whole lot more expensive and much less attractive. Our Connie Kim has the story. The Korean government is preparing new anti-smoking legislation to bring down the nation's high smoking rate. A European Union study last year found Korea's smoking rate at second highest among OECD members, barely trailing Greece. The health ministry said Thursday that it'll submit a revised bill to the National Assembly requiring tobacco companies put graphic health warnings on packs of cigarettes. Currently, written health warnings are only printed on the side of packs. Just a day earlier, the ministry said it'll push to raise taxes on cigarettes, taking in the World Health Organization's recommendations that urge members to raise cigarette taxes to 50 percent. The price of a pack of cigarettes in Korea has remained the same for 10 years or so, at about two and a half U.S. dollars, the lowest in the OECD. The ministry also plans to roll out new anti-smoking ad campaigns by the end of the month. The government has made a number of moves to reduce the number of smokers in the past, but they haven't been successful. Just two years ago, a bill that would have required graphic visual warnings about the health effects of smoking was opposed by the economy and finance ministry due to concerns about falling revenue. As a recent report by the Korea Institute for Health and Social Affairs shows, Korea has a way to go in strengthening its anti-smoking policies. Out of 27 countries surveyed, Korea ranked 25th in terms of actively pursuing non-smoking policies. However, the health ministry is pushing hard to ensure graphic health warnings will be carried on cigarette packs before the year is out. More than 50 countries already have or are in the process of requiring picture warnings be printed on cigarette packs. Connie Kim, Arirang News. A scheduled one-day strike of more than 3,000 gas stations in Korea that was set for today has been put on hold for the time being at least. The Korea Oil Station Association said that while it has failed to reach an agreement with the government over a new rule that requires gas stations to file weekly reports on their purchase and sale of petroleum products, it will push the strike back by about 10 days to hold further negotiations. The government says weekly filing will help root out illegal practices. The association wants its members, which make up one quarter of all gas stations in Korea, to be given a two-year grace period prior to the implementation. The government has said it would allow a six-month probation period before imposing fines for non-compliance. Now, tornado and Korea are two words you would never normally hear in the same sentence. But you will now because a tornado was spotted in Korea earlier this week. News of this twister coupled with freak thunderstorms and torrential rain showers in recent days has people asking if it's all down to climate change, our Shin Semin reports. The worst flooding in the Balkans in over a century. An unusually heavy hailstorm in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And exceptionally heavy snowstorms in the central United States. The effects of climate change are being seen across the globe through abnormal weather events, and Korea is no exception, as evidenced by the last few days. A tornado near Ilsan in Gyeonggi-do province this Tuesday was the first ever spotted on the mainland. The twister lasted for at least an hour, leaving a trail of destruction in its path with at least 21 greenhouses destroyed. Tornadoes aside, other parts of the nation have had their own unique weather experiences this week, which include torrential rain and hail, both of which are unusual this time of year. Meteorologists say an unstable atmosphere is to blame. Five kilometers above the nation, the air is currently at a temperature of minus 15 degrees. Early summer daytime conditions on the surface are generating rain clouds in the skies, leading to torrential rain and hail. For the immediate future, weather forecasters think we're out of the woods in terms of the damaging storms. 
But climate experts worry that the recent events could be a sign of more worrying changes to come. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Well, we'll have our weather forecast coming up in about five minutes' time, so we can check whether more rain is on the way. Now, the animal predictions for the Brazil World Cup, which starts on Friday, Korea time that is, has begun to challenge Paul the Octopus, who became a huge hit after his uncanny forecast during the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. The host nation this time, Brazil, has gotten the vote of confidence from its chosen turtle tipster. Our Son Jung-in has this report. A 25-year-old loggerhead turtle swims slowly across the pool. The male sea turtle named Big Head was given a choice between eating a fish hung from a Brazilian or Croatian flag, the two countries to play in the opening match. The turtle chose the host nation Brazil to beat Croatia. But will Big Head prove to be as credible as Paul the Octopus, who correctly guessed the results of eight World Cup matches four years ago? We held the event just for fun. We organized the event to raise awareness of the sea turtles that are on the brink of extinction. Over in Peru, shamans held a ritual of their own with t-shirts of South American and European squads, brews, coca leaves and skulls, wishing for strength, health and determination of all football players. They reached out to ancient Inca gods for answers using pictures of famous soccer players like Brazil's Neymar and Argentina's Lionel Messi. Brazil will be the one to raise the cup, but they will have difficulties along the way as they will face tough opponents. The Peruvian shamans predicted that Brazil will meet Argentina in the final and asked all South Americans to root for their land until the end of the tournament. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Good afternoon, I'm Lee ji -hyun with your weather updates. As uh, Shin Se-min reported a few minutes ago, the weather has been really weird lately here in Korea. Sprinkles, then rain, then downpours along with thunder and lightning. And it seems like a similar weather pattern is on tap for today. Uh, mostly to partly sunny skies will gradually give way to thunder and lightning in the afternoon. So it could be another gloomy day across the nation. And with that band of rain, temperatures will continue to stay in the seasonal average range, hovering in the mid-20s in most areas, and it should be a tad cooler than yesterday. And it looks like readings will remain in the seasonal norms, but the chance of rain and thunderstorms continues throughout the week. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at the readings for today. The afternoon high in Seoul will rise to 27, while Daegu and Gwangju will rise to 25 and 26 respectively, and Busan will hike up to 21 under partly cloudy skies. Now let's see how other regions are looking. It looks like down on Jeju should see a high of 23, Daejeon and Tokdo will rise to 26 and 19, while Mount Kengang tops out at 14. Well, that's all for me today. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and I will be back with more updates tomorrow morning. Well, that's it for today. Those are the stories we're following at this hour. Mark and I'll be back at the same time tomorrow. Thank you for watching.